This demonstration will be a floral composition again. I'll be painting some hydrangeas. It's a fairly complicated flower to paint. So to help me out a little bit, I'll be testing a new material, new for me, and it's pan pastels. I would like to paint this one fairly large because there are so many details. I decided to use half a sheet of watercolor paper. This is 300 pound, 600 grams cold press paper by Kilimanjaro. I will also need my ceramic cups because I will need a lot of pigment. And I'm going to squeeze out my colors. Try to stick to a fairly limited palette. Just lemon yellow, opera pink, and sap green. I will also need some intense blue to paint the background. And I'm going to start painting without a preliminary drawing, wet on wet. I'm going to lay down a yellow wash under all the flowers to capture that sunlight that I see in the reference photo. They can, then I can start adding green for the leaves, working very loosely, just uh, painting the initial wash. This will be my middle tones. I will then gradually add medium dark and then move on to the darks and add the highlights last. My plan is to use pen pastels. I bought a set that only has very light colors. So I'm thinking that should work for highlights, to bring back the highlights. If you watch my channel, you know that I recently painted several pieces uh, using combination of watercolor and regular soft pastels in sticks. So now I want to try pen pastels because I read that they blend really well with watercolors and very versatile material, easy to use. So I want to give them a try, even though this set was fairly expensive. It was um, about $30 for five colors, but the pens are very large. So they will definitely last a long time and hopefully make my life as watercolor artist a little bit easier because I will be able to add small details to something complex like this hydrangea where there are a lot of small details and they would be very hard to preserve as lights, as paper or lighter areas in my painting. I switched to a smaller brush and I am painting pink petals on the flowers. I can already see that I will have to unify them somehow. I see the same thing happening that happened when I try painting lilacs, hydrangeas, kind of the structure of the flowers very similar. It's a cluster consisting of a whole bunch of smaller flowers. So it's a fine balance between creating the overall form realistically and also creating just the right amount of details. to go back to my flat brush and try to paint the background. I mixed in some phthalo blue into my sap green and I'm going to paint all those dark areas that I see in the reference photo. I think some opera pink in there is necessary so it's not that acid green <laughs> but I want to neutralize it a little bit. I am going to paint the background negatively around my hydrangea. One inch flat brush forces me to work on larger forms first. I see a bunch of spaces between the flowers, but I want to figure out first larger forms where my main areas of darks are going to be, but also can use the corner of the brush to add smaller details.
flowers immediately started to pop when I introduced the darks. And you see, even though I squeezed out some fresh pigment into my ceramic cups, I'm starting to run out. Painting large requires a lot of paint. You don't want to scrape it and try to spread it on paper. It's just not going to look right. It's going to be all dry and streaky. It's important to have enough pigment to cover a large area. I need to decide what to do with the top. I don't want to do too much. It happens very often that I cover the whole sheet and then I regret it and I go back and start adding white, trying to restore the white. Maybe I'll just vignette it out. I'm going to use some clean water and thin out my wash. Maybe add a little splattering. I want to show that there are some leaves in the distance, but I don't want to paint all those details, those faraway details. I'm painting a lot darker. Like I said, I'm painting mid-tones and darks because I want to add the highlights with my pastels. So I will be adding a lot more paint and making the flowers a lot darker than they need to be and then bring back the lights. I feel I need to unify some areas where the flowers are in shadow. They're too kind of fractured, too broken up. I used a smaller brush when I was painting them so we will not see each individual flower in the shadows. We will just see soft forms. I need to soften some of the areas. If you're interested in watercolor painting, but you're just starting your watercolor journey and you want to know more about materials, application techniques, how to pick colors, how to mix them, how to approach form, light, and shadow. In watercolor, I have a very detailed class for beginners. It's called From Zero to Watercolor Hero. You can find the link to that class in the description of this video. I offer a discount to all my YouTube viewers and everyone who joins the class can participate in a forum on my website where I review paintings and give support and encouragement in each and every student that takes my classes. And also on my website, you can find some free materials to download, a free watercolor brushstroke guide. All the links are in the description below. My watercolor painting is dry. My initial wash, here are the pastels. It's a very nicely made set. They're all stacked on top of each other, so they will be easy to take with me if I wanted to use them on location. And they have little applicators on the bottom in a separate cup. I did not buy a holder for those foam applicators. I'm just going to use the smallest one, kind of looks like a makeup applicator. For now, I don't want to spend even more money before I test this material and decide if I'm going to use it or not. I think this tiny little applicator will actually work pretty well for me. So I am going to paint all the highlights that I see in the reference photo. They're on the petals and also there are some little stems that connect those flowers. They're very light. I'm going to paint all this with pan pastels. Maybe I'll add some highlights on the leaves as well. I'm kind of trying to switch between pale yellow, pink, blue, and green. The difference between them is not super noticeable on paper. I mean, there is some difference. But they're very close in hue and also, of course, they're very light, they're close in tone. But they go on very opaque. It's easy to, they have good coverage, easy to apply. I will want to go back in with watercolor. So I want to see if it's easy to paint on top of them with watercolor. The stick, stick pastels that I use, the regular soft pastels that I use are very easy to cover with watercolor. They just kind of melt and you only have pigment remaining. So I want to see how these ones will work. My pastels are applied and I think I did a little too much. Everything looks very light. So I'm going to take my dagger brush and try to darken certain areas. I didn't want to darken things with watercolor right off the bat. My painting looked pretty dark to me already, but now I see that I need to work on some areas a little more because they are way too pale. 
and also the flowers kind of started to disappear almost I see some in very intense pinks there but I don't have them in the in my painting I'll work on the leaves for now find some more details this hydrangea leaves have very complicated veins they look almost like a, a human blood system. <laughs> They're not easy to paint because they kind of go in every which direction. I drew them with the pastels and I'll try to make them a little thinner with my brush and also maybe work on the background a little bit more, darken it as well. It lightened after it dried. So some corrections around the flowers. We can also try to find some more holes in the flower cluster. I think it always looks good to kind of make your flowers breathe a little bit because they're not a solid mass. Really, we can see through them. And I will tell you, those pan pastels are not easy to cover with watercolor. Watercolor kind of slides off of them, maybe because I applied them so thickly and I'm having trouble covering them. I'm going to get a stick of my bright pink regular soft pastels and try to restore those intensely pink petals that I see in the reference photo. I see also some pink on the branch right here on the left. And of course, a stick pastels, you have to smudge to make them blend with watercolor, but pen pastels, because you're applying them with a little applicator, they go on very smoothly. This is what my painting looked like after the first day of painting. I knew it needed more work, so after setting it aside for a couple of days, I decided to continue working on it. I've read a little bit more on pan pastels, watched some demonstrations, and I figured I did a little too much on them. I was so excited to use them. I applied them too thickly, but they are easy to erase. So I'm going to just take my eraser and take them off in a few areas where there is just too much light. And another thing I decided to do is to define my focal point a little bit better. I think all those flowers look a little bit too loose, but some of them need to be painted more precisely and more realistically and with more detail. So I am defining petals on some of the flowers in the center of my composition. It's not quite obvious in the reference photo because, you know, when you take a picture, it's harder to focus on really on what you want to show. But in a painting, it's much easier. So I'm going to define a few flowers a little more. I'm going to give them more texture and the rest I will leave soft because I still want my painting to be kind of loose and watercolory. So I'm doing this with upper pink with my watercolors, working straight out of the well with my quarter inch dagger brush. some more darks. When I was working on the highlights in the painting, I also introduced a little bit of white ink here in the background and I regretted that but because the background became too light. But that's very easy to fix. You can easily paint on top of the ink. So I'm going to darken the background back again the way it was before. It will have a little more interest now, a little more detail. So a few touches with my dagger brush on the background. I think now my painting is finished. So I will show you what I had after day one. And this is the final result that I created after a couple days of consideration. Let me know what you think about this painting. And also if you use pan pastels, what's your opinion of this material, especially in combination with watercolor. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one here on Tamara Studios channel. Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!